the theme today is Kismat, and I took the literal trans uh, synonym of Kismat being either destiny or doom. And um, and if you look at the dictionary, it also says fate. So uh, when we talk about destiny, it means something that is foreordained and often suggests a great or noble cause. And doom implies a uh, um, something of a calamity. And so with Storm of the Brains, I think it fits in the Kismet theme very well, because if you look at the way Bangalore was structured, it, it looked like the Storm of the Brains had to reach its destiny, which is the gate. But over a period of time, we've also seen that it can um, challenge you, it can overwhelm you, and it can come out in the form of floods. So I've taken this from uh, Janki Nair's book, where she says, for a city like Bangalore that was not close to the river um, and was situated at an elevated bridge, a reliable water, so, you know, source of supply of water for agricultural and education purposes was very essential. And so, um, and of course, that, I mean, we all know that most settlements are near water banks. So, because of which, that the provisions of water through uh, systems of tides became very crucial in Bangalore. And if you look at this particular map, which I've taken from her book, you can see the black areas. And for the purpose of today's talk, I'm only going to be focusing on the Kormangla Valley uh, because it's also in the news, but given the fact that it is the K-100 project. And if you look at it, the black one, extreme right, you can find the Chalgata Valley. Then you have the Kormangla tank, you have the Dongle tank, you have the uh, also tank. So you can see the... The, the spread of the whole thing. What was my motivation to start to follow the dream? Um, I used to work, um, I had co founded Radioactive, a community radio station uh, in 2007, and uh, its office was in, on Palace Road, and I used to stay in Kormanda. So, my daily career to work, while I would change my routes, I sometimes would take the Hosu Road, but sometimes I would take the Ijipura Road. And going by Ijipura Road, the dreams for me were always like a fixture. It was not something that I really cared of, even though I worked in waste. And uh, one particular day, I just looked, I just happened to chance upon the drain, and what I actually noticed was this plastic thin bed. And the next day, I think there was a compactor, it had rained, basically trying to take out all the plastic, and the whole plastic was dumped outside. So that particular image actually continued to haunt me. So then I made myself go to go and actually visit the drain. And this is this is the poem that came out at that point in time. I'm just going to read it out. I stood transfixed at the sight of the drain, choking in the things we discard. I stood immobile at the sight of the drain, experiencing the view, discomforting and disconcerting. I questioned like everyone else, who is to be who's to blame? What we to assume our crime scene and spill sea, uh, secrets will wash away with the rain. I stood wondering, were we an unsuspecting accessory? Were we delusional in thinking, nothing is wrong? But what about the encroachments, the encroachments the only fault? Why is there no respite from urban flooding? Why the purposeful avoidance? And what are we unseen? So, I stood transfixed at the sight of the drain, desolate and dairy. The stink of the garbage, the coloured waters, lines scorched yet taken for granted, absorbed into a thing of nothingness. I stood transfixed at the sight of the grave, at the sight of the, uh, of the rubbish in the middle, uh, an oddity but one of hope because I saw a little bit of green, of free flowing waters. I stood transfixed at the sight of the grave. There's a story to be told that moves past grim newspaper reports. Blame games and trotting breaks. There's a story to be told that moves past the act of cleaning and beautifying. That moves past man-made construction. I stood transfixed at the sight of the drain. Yet there's a story to be told. And that was how my journey began because this is something that I felt deeply. And I'm like, why are we seeing what we are seeing? And why we only talk about the drains when it floods? So. All these poems that I have over a period of time written as part of the stormwater drain are basic, also based on snippets of conversation with communities and also my observation of the places and my readings of literature. But um, 
Over a period of time, from something that I viewed as a fixture, I began to, to take in the beauty of the dream. And, um, and so and it, it also became therapeutic. And, it also the, and the photographs that I've taken also become, has become like an ode to the dream. Uh, now, when I look at the dream, so as the dream goes, the project title as the dream goes, is more of an illusion to follow the dream. And I'm, I'm saying I dare say it because, um, because, you know, at times I watch it pass. At times I watch it stuck. At times I watch it swamped. At times I watch it choked. At times I watch, watch it choked with, uh, with buildings engulfing it because it's all encroached around. At times you will see the, lay the stormwater drains completely parched, breathless, lifeless, vanishing away from you, as you pass, suddenly it disappears underground and then you don't know where it goes. And um, so I walk above or we drive above and then you wonder where it is. And so I wonder if the drain is actually weeping um, and, and how do we set it free? So then suddenly you will find the drain magically appearing, uh, dark and dirty yet beautiful. And I'm saying beautiful because over a period of time, I really begin to look at the beauty in spite of whatever rubbish is inside. Um, so the expanse, the stretch, it's, it's, it's some, it hangs invisible. I mean, because we are so used to invisibilize things that we do not, that we don't want to care, that we, that we don't want to view. If there's garbage, it's easy for us to just walk past it. Um, so, so, uh, so for the K-100 project, it is, uh, the, the, the state government is actually funding the state, the, the K-100 project. And uh, I think the proposal came up uh, there was a consultation meeting that took place before this whole proposal was put out in the public domain. If you go to praja.org, you'll find um, a critique on this whole process where there were select people who were invited to the table. Uh, this whole idea was discussed and then it moved forward. And, the, the, and there are two different grants that were allotted. Even this time's budget has significant amount allotted to the K-100 project. So it was designed as a citizen's waterway project. And with the whole imagination that citizens should be able to be able, you know, to use it as a recreational space, use it as a public space where you can also look at it from a walking perspective. This is the map that I got from the BBMP. If you look at the starting point of K-100, which is at um, uh, your fa the famous Shantala Silk, and it goes down to Bellendur. But on the route, it touches about 18 different wards. So, what are these 18 different wards? And there are different, there are three types of drains. The primary one, which is the blue. Then you have the secondary drain and the tertiary drain. Now, all these passes to about 18 wards. And some of the 18, and the 18 wards are uh, right from Gandhinagar, which is ward 94. Uh, then it goes down to Cotton Pate. From there, it goes down to... Um, uh, cotton pate, sorry, it goes down to chick pate and then cotton pate. Then you have KR Market, you have Dharma Raya Swami, then you have uh, Sudam Nagar, you have Hombe Gauda Nagar, you have Shanti Nagar, Laksandra, Adugodi, Neel Sandra, Vanar Pate, uh, Kormangla, and then it goes down to Belindur. But on the periphery, you also have the likes of um, HSR layout. So the, and then you have, sorry, Ijipura I missed, and Jaksandra also is what I missed, and Agaram. So if you look at the, the imagination of um, Citizen Water Project, it's beautiful because it's then all, all this while uh, stormwater drains were always treated as poor cousins of the lakes. They were always treated with stepmotherly treatment or step, step treatment was always given to it, not motherly, step treatment was always given to it. It was always less glamorous. It was not glamorous enough for people to actually look at stormwater drains in the way we should be looking at stormwater drains because like um, recently when I did when I hosted an Instagram live uh, Bhargavi who is from ESG and they worked on a PIL in, in 2012 and post that in 2009 ESG also included in that uh, PIL which uh, then actually that stormwater drains are essential and she said stormwater drains are like little veins which carry it to the whole this thing so in that context, I think it's very important for us to reimagine, um, uh, you know, our waterways, which includes everything else. And with lakes, there has been a lot of efforts, a lot of citizens coming together. There has been, um, uh, you know, cases that have gone on. 
but with storm water drains it's there but it's always in the in the background but i have to take you back in time in 1961 there was this deccan herald article which actually talked about the state of bangalore where they actually where the, the article actually talked about everything that was wrong in the city right from the roads uh, right from the uh, you know maintenance of parks right from right right from the ha haphazard growth that was happening in the city and the, basically the sad state of affairs well while some things have improved still things remain the same this is the starting point of the k100 train where's the train <laughs> so if you can see that um, footpath there where the car is parked and you can see the wall there so that wall is actually the drain which then goes into uh, it goes underground and it goes all the way past the bus stand and all that so I, I don't I forgot to put the other photo you've all heard about the karga the uh, recently that was concluded so the Kar the temple Dharmaraya Swami temple often floods and uh, when we were looking for the drain, we went to the temple and then we asked, but where is the water coming from? And they kept saying, oh, from the, from the Dod Mori, which is the big Mori. And where is the Mori? The Mori is at the KR market site, but the water is coming. And so we were pointed out to this particular um, outlet, which says the water is coming from here. And that's why the whole temple site floods. And then we walked around uh, chick paint and cotton paint and we could see the waters around but we couldn't see the drain then we're looking for the KR market drain somewhere down we found this particular board fallen down and then we found the drain so this is the famous KR market drain and after that as we walk we were looking at because the K100 project is, is taking place it's in a constant state of being um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, there's too much of construction work and this is what was happening. On top of, on your extreme left, you can see the box drain and on the right, you can see the other side of the drain. This is the Saddam Nagar drain, which has, which has had sufficient amount of work and you can see the yellow bridge on that, which is a new addition because they are now trying to do away with the old bridge. This is the Shanti Nagar bit. Again, there's all of us uh, in the photograph on the left. And this is the Shanti Nagar rejuvenation. It's supposed to uh, be inaugurated on August 15th. And by then, things. this is all work in progress. I have, I've been tracking it from October, so I have different stages of picture. This is uh, um, Ardagodi leading towards Rajendra Nagar, LR Nagar. Again, work was on full swing when, when I took pictures. Um, then we come to uh, Rajendra Nagar, where you can see the drain is behind the building and you can see all the... So where does the waste get into the drain? So this is one which was a starting point. Then uh, we, this is Neel Sandra Vivek Nagar. You can see the border there and you can see there is two... The, the drain is like this. So there's one drain coming in from one side and the other one from the other side. And then it goes all the way to NGV. This is NGV, which I found it very beautiful uh, because you can also see the reflection of the buildings across, but then there were too many mosquitoes. But the other thing to notice is that none of the stormwater drains have an identity. Like we have street names, like we have uh, names of lakes with boards, we don't have any, any names for stormwater drains because most often, ah, that is that Mori, that is that Nala, is what is, what is often said. But you will find in some places a plaque. Like if you go towards ST bed, and uh, ST bed was again in the news for uh, flooding. Uh, when you go towards ST bed, this is before when you come from Sony World Junction, and you take the and you take the left uh, after that Maharaja uh, circle, you will find a plaque which says so and so MLA has inaugurated. You go to Sudam Nagar again, you will find a plaque which says so and so MLA inaugurated this particular bridge. But till such time, we are able to connect the places and we are able to build an identity over it so that people know that just like NG Road is NG Road because it is for whatever reason, if the drain flowing next door and I don't know the name, it won't make any difference. So two things, garbage and identity is what I'm being focusing on. I just wanted to set the floor open now. You've seen some of the pictures, you've seen, you've heard the names of the wards, but the problem is, 
and you've seen the scale of the project. You'll all have been reading about the scale of the project of the K-100, and it is actually needed. But can you just pour in money without addressing some of the ground realities that plague these places? And because I'm not looking at sewage, I'm not looking at the act of uh, uh, of construction per se, but I'm just looking at our relationship with garbage and water. And that's very essential. So I'm just opening up the floor. How do we actually work something out if we don't fix or if we don't go back to the root of the problem? So if you look at some of the wards, like Neil Sandra was actually a village and it, it is featured in the old maps of Bangalore. And Sandra means equivalent to Samudra, which means there would have been some kind of a water body there. Wanar Pet, which is next to it, was a washerman's pet, which was a washerman's area. And so that remained as is. Ardugodi, for that matter, Bosch came and set up factory in 1953. And, and if you go and if you Google, uh, uh, I think there's a memo of um, Bosch, and it has an aerial view of Ardugodi of 1954, I think. But 1953 was when Bosch came and set up. But if you look at the growth around the area, what has changed? If you look at, um, if, if you go to Open City and you put, type in all these words, you will still see a lot of them saying slum, 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 slum. So we are still calling all these places slum. We are, all these places still do not have access to better waste management services. In conclusion, I think I would only like to say that uh, given that the theme is Kismat, if the stormwaters drain Kismat is to be clear waters, then obviously there is a lot more things that we need to also collectively work with. And I think the starting point is to start having conversations around stormwater drains. Um, in, in the past, I don't think so. I would have talked about and or got excited about spotting new stormwater drains. But off late, I, there is a different kind of um, uh, you know, excitement when you look at a drain and you don't know where it's coming from and where it is. And I'm glad that I started it like that, that I didn't look at the map first, but just went by, uh, just went around, wandering around to, uh, to identify it. And I think I, think I would just, um, Say if, if the drains have to reach their natural um, destiny point, then the starting point is let's all talk about it. So if if any of you all are free and would like to come around, wander around the drains, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to have conversations around drains and garbage. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.